uh, it is the height of summer here today. You can see people are just out sailing. It's a very pretty afternoon. And it's about, uh, about 80 degrees. So we've got some nice warm weather. And there's my buddy. He's pretty much here all day. Hey, this is Vaughan at westcoatbellpottery.ca in Nova Scotia, Canada. It's August the 13th. Um, on the bright side, sales are really good. Um, on rainy days, people like to shop. Uh, so anyway, um, I've been shipping a lot of fish around the country um, and to the United States. Um, and I was figuring that I did a video of these a while back, a couple of years ago, I think. Um, and I thought we got that covered um, so people could make their own fish. Um, I don't mind selling mine, I'm pretty good at making them now, uh, so if you want one of mine that's fine, but um, if you've got a local potter in your area you might want to ask him to make one so that you don't have to uh, ship one across the country, uh, save you some money on shipping charges. So I've got everything I need right here to make some fish and I'm going to show you how to do it right now. Texturing materials. So I've got stamps, I have rollers, all there. I need a little container of water, I need a slab to actually um, make a fish out of, and I need a resource material. So I've got a book with some fish there, so I know how to uh, what a fish looks like. Um, and I know pretty much by now, but it's good to have some reminders there. Close up here. Um, I'm assuming most people know how to roll a fish out by, by now if you're doing pottery class, but if you don't, all you need is two sticks, a lump of clay in the middle, and a rolling pin, and you just roll it backwards and forwards and you end up with like making pastry. It's a slab of clay instead of pastry. Um, so that's what you need to make a slab. Quarter inch thick with two sticks. These are just Loan board or, or masonite. Um, and you end up with a slab. It's nice to smooth it using a metal scraper. These have been sitting about um, an hour maybe. So they're pretty fresh and it's really humid today. It's raining. So you can do this straight out of the bag. You don't need to stiffen your clay up. In fact, it's probably better to do it a little soft because you don't need to do any scoring and scratching. So basically, little pin, you can draw with this. If, you, if you're not competent, you can just lightly sketch and then you can all, if you do a mark on this stuff, you just rub it out. So you don't, don't have to be worried about making a mistake. And then pick a fish that you want to actually do. So let's have a tail up here. Here's my fish tail. I'm going to curve it out and we'll do the body of the fish. So it's, you know, it's giving a little twist to the body, give it a little action. Um, let's give him some fins up here. Don't need to be precise at this point because you can rub it out. Let's give it a little fin here as well. Let's give him a nice big mouth. He's gonna have an eye in there. We're gonna probably put in a little face area there. Um, I didn't leave enough for a fin down here, but I've got lots of spare clay up here where I can make fins from. But we could actually, um, yeah, I think what I'm going to do is cut that off and use this for a big fin too here. So, but let's say we're going to have a smaller fin here. And then we're going to have a bigger one here. 
but that little bit of the fin there, I can get out of that piece of clay or that piece of clay up there. So now we need to just cut some stuff out. So just a regular exacto. Potter's tip, never leave that exacto blade loose from the knife in your studio because it could get mixed up in the clay and you will be going to the emergency room. So be very careful with exacto blades in the studio. All right, so I'm just cutting out. So this is a very quick video, basically, maybe 20 minutes. I'm on, a, I'm on a Lazy Susan, so I can just simply turn the board. Makes it very easy to work. I'm gonna cut straight across that fin because I'm gonna get that fin from somewhere else. I'm gonna give my tail a little wiggle out there, and then I'm gonna do some wiggling here because that's the actual end of the tail. I'm coming back in. And this fin I can leave there. So I'm gonna go backwards and forwards to give myself some sharper kind of fin things and then come back over. And then come up. And this is where I'm wiggling the knife again. Let's see, so to see what you can see a bit easier here. So just kind of moving the knife backwards or forwards to give some spikes to that fin. Coming back around to where we started almost. And that's it. And then cut it out. Saving this piece because I can use that. I could probably use this little bit here, but I'm not sure yet, but I may as well save it. I have a wet sponge there that I can put my clay on as I pull it off in case I'm gonna be using little bits. I don't want it to dry out. Cut that little thin piece off, I don't need that. I do need this, for sure. Take that little piece off. So, what can we get with this piece? That's a random looking shaped piece of clay um, but I can actually use it for a fin up here and just round off that, come down like this. Now I'm not looking at my photographs, the, the illustrations in that book, because I know pretty much from experience what a fish looks like and what they can, you know, what kind of fin. And believe me, they are bizarre in cases, so you can make it up, you can go fantasy fish. So this thing can go down from up there. And so we've got another fin in the middle there. And this one, if I place him here, I can have a curve there, and then we can kind of... So there's another fin for down there. It takes a lot of bubble wrap and a lot of peanuts and a cardboard box to actually ship one of these fish around the country because they're th thin, so fragile. Um, so that's why I'm saying, if you're a local potter, I to sell a lot of these fish. I mean, I'm on the water. You may be on a lake though. Um, so, go and make yourself some fish. Okay, so save the planet. All right, so we've got another fin coming out here. Hi, you need some help? No, I was wondering about fines. There you go, sorry about that, I had a customer for a minute. Um, so, um, if you're gonna join two pieces together there without showing a bump, I use this kind of roller and I simply bevel that edge and then the opposite edge. So 
so you don't end up with the, the big piece in the middle where the two thicknesses are together. So, and this is why I'm doing it really fresh clay, wet the both edges and you don't have to score. Just create some slip by rubbing like that. And then you can join this piece right on there. Just give it a bit of movement at first to, to wiggle, wiggle, wiggle to get that slip that's there to join together. And then you simply roll again Then you can smooth, you can kind of make it a bit thinner, maybe at the edges of the, the fin there. And if you want to just give it a little, it doesn't even look like it was separate. All right, so let's move this piece and this piece. I don't think I'll need those at the moment. I think this, this one's going to go right here. This one has to be done the same. We give it a little bevel. Then is that one got to get confused? It's easy done these days. So we've got a little moisture both sides, just enough to that it's tacky. Remember, water separates clay, but if you can get this to mix up with the slip, so you've got water and clay make slip, then you can actually. Um, get them to join easy. So the, the finger is just to actually give it a bit of a contact thing and then you roll that like that and then I'm thinning the end again and we got the fin on the top joined there all over so uh, so this lot is all kind of just normal. I have to cut this little bit here off. Okay, here's the secret giveaway. Oh, actually, I've got one more thing to do first. <clears throat> so, I'm giving that a little line to separate it, make it a lower level. Now we can stretch those ones out by just kind of rolling down a bit. It lowers the level a little bit. Same here. So all these are lower levels now. I can actually, using a little modeling tool again, kind of follow the curve. I'm doing that, and then I've got this curve here. So just so it followed that curve all the way down. And then once I've done that, I can put some pressure on. And you can pull that along. The other way of doing it is using this roller. You can actually follow the curve with the roller and push it down a little bit lower again. It's a bit wet at the moment for doing that, but that's another way to do it. You're basically pushing down to lower it. And it gives you that line between the fin and of course then you can just kind of smooth it out, but that's not time to do that yet. Get that piece out of here. So whatever texture you want here, you could roll in a piece of lace cloth here, you could use some corduroy, um, you can use a modeling tool and just repeatedly press, press, press. You can do stamps. I have multiple stamps here that I could actually use. Um, you know, some of them are really funky. I got a, you know, we, in the studio, we must have a couple of hundred of these stamps with different textures. Some are useful, some are less so for fish. Um, but I also have the Speedy. This tool is made by um, MK, MK Tools, I guess it would be. Um, and you can make marks with it by rolling. And there's various things you can put in this. So a quick way to do these is to simply roll with the tool. And there's lots of ways you could do it. So that gives you that look. Then I got these off Amazon. Don't know who makes them, but I just found them and I bought them. So I can roll this, bit of pressure on there. And 
and that gives me another texture on the fish. So let's just so you can see what we've got so far. So there's, that's quite fast and speedy to do that. Um, now that we've done that, I can start smoothing the actual fins. And then I've got to do the face thing here. So I'm gonna pull that tool. I could use the roller to do that, but we can pull that tool along. I can actually see what about the face, the mouth. Dipping the tool in water makes it slide easier. That's a good tip here. And then you can just kind of pull down a little bit. So we've got his large mouth. What I was saying is, that, I mean, I've been selling so many fish that I um, sort of, my, the outside of my, my studio is covered in fish. Um, and so it's a good stopping tool for cars going by. Um, the way around, do I need that that way? So just emphasize the mouth a bit. People see them from the road as they're driving by and they either turn around and come back or they stop. So that's why I covered the wall of my studio with fish, because we're on the tourist lighthouse route in Nova Scotia. So we've got a face. What about an eye? Let's get a little bit of clay here. Depends on how big you want it. Make a little ball of clay. And make sure it sticks by just adding a little water there. Place him down. Press with your finger. Take whatever tool you want to stamp the eyeball. Give him a nice crazy look. Um, and just smoothing these fins. Oh, I didn't roll that, so I'm just gonna use the brush to pull it thinner. I, use, I usually roll the end of the fin down there with that little roller. But if you press hard with this paintbrush, well, with some water on it, it will actually do the stretching as well. Okay, we got that done. So now we've got, we were going to have this little fin up here. So I need to smooth that. Do the same, I guess, there. Put it on paper so it doesn't stick to the wooden bat. If everything's on paper, it won't stick to the surface that you're working on. Alright, so now, using the wooden modeling tool again, you can use this roller. This will do this job that I'm about to do as well. Um, so, I simply pull the tool towards the end of the fin. smooth it again. Now before I put it on I'm going to um, let's see yeah, before I, I'm going to make the lines there I guess. I was thinking this fish could have been either way up couldn't it? It looks good either way because I was thinking about doing it the other way. He's got a smile on his face now. I didn't anticipate that. I did have comments from customers about the mouth they wanted the fish that looked happy. And when you're selling things in a retail situation, obviously you want people to walk away from your booth happy. So anything you can do to emphasize happiness can't be a bad thing. There you go. And then you smooth out. Lots of smoothing. We should give the end here a little thing into the tail there. And then we're going to do the same up the top part here. Um, My kiln is firing if you can hear the roaring in the background because these iPads pick up all sorts of sound. Okay, 
Okay. So here's your big refresher course in how to make fish. And there are so many to work from. Nice and smooth. And then the last one is to as soon as it starts pulling the clay, you could dip it in water or turn it over. smooth again. Now this is a very flat fish and to actually give the fish a little energy, I'm just brushing up the any sharp edges at this point around the ends. I just have to show you this. Look out my window. Isn't that fun? I got pigeons, I got seagulls, and a boat. I think you can see it all there. Oh, there they go. I shouldn't have moved the iPad. That's my company. They keep me company all day. All right, now the last one is this one. So, a little bit of water. Remember, this clay is soft. I could throw a pot with this clay. It's so soft. So I do that and then a tiny little bit underneath, place it, make sure it's in the right place, which it looks good, that looks pretty good. Then this pressure will join them. Thumbprint there, one of my stamps, which I like is that one. That gives it a little extra kind of thin mark there. And the last thing, to actually in the construction part of these is I like to give it some some energy some feeling of movement so I bend the fins the back one here now for shipping these across the country this makes it more difficult because they're going to be a little bigger now um, and with a little depth um, so so they take a bit more, they're a bit more fragile. So the flatter you leave it, it probably would be better, I guess, for that. But I like to give them some energy. It just takes a bit more thickness of bubble wrap. So that's lifted off the surface there. Same with this one, lift the paper, put your fingers underneath and you can peel the paper back a little bit. And you can curve it. So it's curved up. This one here, another trick is to just use the edge of a wooden tool and just kind of push it and lift it a little bit. Once you get the brush underneath, it's a lot easier because it's wet. The brush is wet. Except that one's being awkward. The paper's ripping too, so I've got to be careful of that. But I'm simply lifting it away from the board to give that feeling of movement and rippling, because the fins would ripple in the ocean. Okay, you get the feeling over there. Same on this side. See if I can lift it and get it to separate, because you're simply trying to move the paper down a little bit. Pull it, then you've got my fingers underneath, and you can do that a bit more. And that's it. I know I can do lots more to it, but that's a basic fish in real time so that you guys can save some shipping materials on my part because uh, I'm shipping six fish out to Arizona tomorrow.
um, and um, it's probably going to, I think it was $113 to ship six fish, just small ones, um, about this size, um, and uh, and a lot of boxes, a lot of a lot of bubble wrap and a big box. So so this would help save the planet. Save the planet? Why not? Yeah, I mean this. You know, I have. I, I like to share. I'm, I've got lots of ideas. If you've seen my gallery tour and everything, I am uh, skilled at making a lot of types of pottery, uh, and uh, it's nice to share. So, and I think the world would be a better place if we all did a lot of sharing and love. All right. So, um, I'll show you some pictures of the best ones. Uh, I made twelve today, uh, and uh, you know, I, I'll put some pictures, and then I'll. Put some pictures of some glazed ones because I have a kiln unloading to Tuesday with some fish and whales in it. So I'll show you what those look like at the end of this video too. All right, take care and have a great summer. Last night we were hit by lightning in the gallery, a direct hit on the building. And fortunately, the building is still there. But we have a burning, smoldering fire in the upstairs of the building. So we're still trying to find out where the actual lightning strike hit because there's no burn marks or hole marks on the back of the building or the side of the building. So they think it may have gone in through the roof and with some metal connector uh, from the roof to the walls, because it does have rebar in the ICF construction, that the, the electricity was basically transferred down into the wall and that's where the fire started. Maple steak, straight chocolate chip cookies. Yeah. We all need to bake chocolate chip cookies for our local firemen. This is La Haven District Fire Department. Lightning struck the, the gallery. <laughs> um, so as you see from the pictures first, um, I had this at 2200 degrees firing, just finished actually, and, um, and then the storm hit, luckily. The lightning struck over there instead of here. If it knocked the power off here, all my fans would have gone off to cool the building while this is cooling down. So we got lucky. <laughs> anyway, yeah. I have a fish. I don't show you, I won't show you all the mugs because this is like a lot of mugs for three shops that around here they've ordered like between them about 140 mugs. So we'll do, we'll show you the fish because they're looking good. But, uh, so the firing was perfect, it just took a long time to reach because it was very heavily packed. But, um, but oh, let's get you all in there. He's a nice guy. And I'll show these in the video I just did for carving or making fish as well. So um, but there's one, that's nice. I didn't make the mistake in these ones, but hopefully we'll, all will be good. But sometimes I forget to put holes in these guys. So, um, so if you're going to make some fish, make sure you put some holes in them. But um, these, that's called the purple matte turquoise and the copper bronze. A lot of these are glazed that way because uh, I had a guy wanting to um, get one in those colors. And when I get a request, I like to make, I use it as an excuse to just do a whole bunch of variations on a theme because it could, you know, it's nice to surprise yourself. Same three glazes. We've got some nice metallic copper in these too, so um, if I can give you a close up in the sun, there's no sun, so it won't catch it. It's very dull today. We've had a very rainy summer. There we 
you go. That's what the back of it, I should show you the back. That's what they look like. And that's where I lift the rims up, the edges, to give it a bit of movement and life. I broke one of my whales while I was blazing and I knocked the jaw off, but I still have this one. Um, mouse gray, uh, variegated blue, and oatmeal for these guys. Bottom cones, cone seven is the last one, which was just starting to bend. And there's the top. So bottom, bottom, top. So that was a very even firing, but it took a long time for the bottom to actually start reaching. Uh, maybe an extra 30 minutes or so, maybe 35 minutes. Uh, which I guess in the scheme of things isn't so bad. The kiln, so electric kilns are a lot more even. This one takes a bit of catching up at the bottom. Depends on how you pack it too, because I can make it actually reach temperature earlier if I have it lightly packed down there. But I like to fill the kiln. This one looks like a nice color. Here's another fish. It's There's unlimited variations for these. I, I kind of like making them. It's a break from throwing on the wheel. Um, And of course, you don't need to have a wheel to have a pottery studio. You know, I could see somebody starting a business up just making fish. How about uh, whales, fish, uh, sharks? Uh, you could even... Octopuses, I wouldn't get it. They, 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 they would break. Um, little tiny thin pieces sticking up a big piece of clay. I don't know. That would be tough. I have never sold so many fish in the summer months as I have this year. Um, most of them stay local, but I've been shipping, as I said, even Arizona and Florida. So it's, um, it's a lot of packing material. It's got some nice movement. So. This is where the mugs start, and it's two, there's two 18 by uh, 24 shelves back and front, and then so you've got one, four, six shelves full of mugs for that order. So that's why I'm just not going to show you all these mugs, because they actually would be a lot of repet repetition. But look at that one. Ooh, very nice. That's 516 clay from uh, Pottery Supply House. They sent me a new batch and it's really nice to throw. And I did a yellow bottom. Kind of looks like the beach, the ocean, and the land in the background. Another fish. I still get excited about mugs even though I make so many. Um, because the glazing I try to do different quite often. Mouse gray really turned out nice. That's a big whale. You don't usually make them that big. I'd touch corner to corner across the shell. Oh, he's a cutie. Look at the gold glow around that center dorsal thing. Not to break them. He's a big guy. I don't think I should have used the um, I used a diluted variegated blue on the bottom part of the whale on these ones, and I'm not as happy with that. I liked it better when they were just oatmeal. Another little guy. That little bit of the tail slumped down a bit. I'll have to be careful screwing that one to the wall. It's like when they've got some movement. See, it's lowing, It's a bit lower than the actual flatness of the whale. That one looks better. There's 
go. The metallic, some Tendaku gold, matte turquoise, bright blue. So four glazes on that guy. Oh, apple green on the face too. Well, I have a pod of whales now. That looks good. He's really nice. I like the bottom oatmeal area of that one too. So maybe it was just that one that was a little heavily apprised. Finally, a blue whale. Yeah, he's a nice blue. I put a, I find the blue very heavily there by the look of it because it stayed very bright. The clay that's dark like this actually makes the blue less intense unless you apply it really thickly. He's nice. That one is very quick to make. And there's matte turquoise, a copper bronze, and a little bit of blue in the face. Just three glazes sponged on. And this guy is the last of the whales and the fish. So I'm pretty sure we'll put these up on the wall straight away. All right. So lots of mugs, um, blues. I mean, I did all bright colors. There'll be a lot of purples in here. The, the galleries seem to want bright colors this year. Um, so of course, the most popular is the blue. Um, and then the turquoise, which I don't see, but the actual matte turquoise turned out really nice. And that's on speckled clay. I'm surprised it's very bright. There's some speckles in there, so I don't think it's the white 516 after all. Again. Possibly this one is the 516 because I don't see any speckles in that one, so there must be two. But there's my liner glaze on the inside there. It's my oatmeal that's my liner glaze. I also use a clear oatmeal, a clear liner as well. But, but the yellow at the bottom shows up the studio stamp if you want to use a stamp or your signature. Okay, so. Um, been a rough couple of days but um, I shipped a bunch of stuff out this morning and then it's uh, went life as normal except for a few basic repairs in the studio now which are fortunately except for electrical I can do mostly myself so uh, sheet rocking and putting wooden floor down all right so thank you very much for joining me at westcoatbellpottery.ca um, and uh, feel like a lucky guy today